What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another episode of the How to Vegan podcast. Today is a super exciting episode because I have my first guest ever, Maddie Limburner. So excited. <laughs> I'm so excited to so be excited. here. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to do this. And you're awesome. I'm so excited. Oh, <laughs> this is my first podcast like interview. And this is your first first podcast, very first podcast as well, too. I've never so. even like been interviewed before, so I'm, I'm pretty stoked. <laughs> well, this is perfect because I've never interviewed anyone before. I'm a little nervous, so we'll be good. <laughs> I think we both are a little nervous. Yeah, but the nerves it'll be will good. Fade. <laughs> yeah, once we get into it, it'll be good. <laughs> yeah. Um, so for those of you who don't know, um, Maddie Limburner is a YouTuber. She has over 200,000 subscribers on her channel. She has two channels. They're both awesome. <laughs> we'll talk more about that later. Um, a content creator and ambassador for Vivo Life. She just re released her first ebook last year on your birthday. Yeah. 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 yeah it's last November. Awesome. Oh, awesome yeah. ebook. Every recipe in there is awesome. We'll talk more about that later too. <laughs> um, and I'm sure she has a ton more exciting things coming. So I'm just so happy that you're here and excited to have you on today. So again, thank you so much for coming and being here with us. Of course. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm so I'm literally so excited to be here. I hey. just want to say that I absolutely love you. Uh -huh. The way that I met you was through social media, through Instagram. And the first thing I noticed about you was just how chill and like such good vibes you were. I was like, I love this girl. Like Yay. she is so cool. Yay. So I'm so stoked for you. And I just want to say congratulations. Congratulations on all of this. Like, Thank I'm you. so pumped for you. Thank you so much. I feel the same <laughs> way about you. I'm like, oh, Maddie is one of my favorite YouTubers. <laughs> Honestly, you were one of the reasons that I started a YouTube channel because I, a lot of the YouTubers I had seen before were way professional, like super professional and had, a, I mean, yours was one of more like laid back mixed in with like bomb editing. Oh, thank you. And I just loved it. I fell in love and I was like, oh, I should start a YouTube channel. Maybe I could help yeah. out too. So yeah, you were That's definitely so cool huge inspiration for me too. So this is, Aww, this is awesome. Thank you. That's so I awesome. Love this. I love this. Um, so for those of you who are, for people who don't know you, um, tell us a little bit about your journey to veganism. What inspired you to go vegan? Uh, so I've been vegan now for almost five years, four and a half years ish. And so when I met my boyfriend, Kyle, who, if you watch my videos, he's my other half. Yes. Um, he was starting to go vegan. He was totally like into raw veganism at that time and was juicing lots. And on our first date, I was eating chicken, like totally not vegan at all. And he was just like telling me all about the power of plant foods and how just like all this information. And I was just so intrigued. I thought he was a little weird. I was like, okay, this is kind of weird. And I feel bad because I'm eating chicken in front of you. But he was eating chicken as well because he didn't want to make me feel weird. And so we just kind of did it all together and we just dove right into it. And obviously watching tons of people on YouTube, that's what really inspired us. That's how we really found it. So we're so thankful for those people that just, you know, put themselves out there and put that information out there online, which is one of the reasons why I started to do it myself. But yeah, so we just really educated ourselves and read lots of books, documentaries, all that good stuff. But when I watched Gary Yurofsky's speech, and then I think there was like slaughterhouse footage, like over top of it or something like that. I was just like that night, I was like, nope, can't do it anymore. I'm not, I can't eat meat. And then probably like a few weeks after that, it took me a little bit to cut out dairy. And then I was totally vegan after that. And there's no going back now. <laughs> like I just, I couldn't picture myself ever. It just isn't the same anymore. Yeah, I totally agree with you. It's like that overnight thing where you're just that mindset change. You're like, oh. <laughs> it's just like something clicks and you're just like, okay. Like I'm thinking in a totally different pattern now. Like this is not something that I ever used to think about or ever used to see before. It's totally. just like that light bulb that goes off. Totally. So would you say that your primary like reason for going vegan was, did you have one primary reason or is it kind of all of the main three or what led you there or Kyle specifically, since it sounded kind of like he was the one that was first thinking about it? Yeah, he actually, he watched his grandma pass away and it was from cancer. And so he was just, that started to get him thinking like this shouldn't happen like why does this happen and then he was also having lots of knee pain as well so for him it was very much so like health focused like he wanted to understand why all this was happening so that's how he found it and then once we started doing more research together because I really didn't care about my health I have a very fast metabolism have always been slim my whole life could eat whatever I wanted so that wasn't something that I was concerned about 
But then once we started diving more deeper into like the ethics and I, I'm, I love animals so much, like so much. And just to see like, you know, like the baby cow being ripped away from its mom, like I was bawling and I was like, okay, like, so it was definitely more ethics for me at the beginning. But then again, once you start, you know, researching and educating yourself, it's like, there you're you're very well-rounded vegan after yeah. that <laughs> there's so many avenues to becoming vegan and then once you're there and you learn about everything else you're like oh okay <laughs> yeah I'll just yeah. keep it's doing just like this. puzzle pieces that just totally kind of together totally so what what are some of the biggest benefits that you've noticed since going vegan the first thing I noticed within the first few weeks and this is what I tell everybody I was working at a health food store and this guy he was always super vibrant and like always had so much energy and somehow we got to talking about veganism and I was like I just went vegan and he was like no way like I'm vegan too and I was like okay this makes so much sense (laughs) and I was like he's like how do you feel and I was like the first thing I felt I was like you're gonna think I'm kind of weird but I just feel like this cloud has been lifted off of my face and I can just see things in life so much clearer and I just have such a better perspective on things and he was like I totally understand what you're talking about and that was the first thing I ever felt and I just had so much more energy I slept a lot longer like it was just a total shift total shift yeah it um, is it is other than that like total shift <laughs> but no it is it is it's like that total shift but it is different for everyone the kind of the first things they notice are different. So that's awesome that, that you kind of like, cause I think a lot of people I talk to f- feel that later on, like, Oh, just kind of like this more light and, and even just more connected and stuff. So I love that. That's one of the yeah. first things that you experience. Yeah. What, what about now? Like, what do you like just some of the main things now that you feel are huge benefits? I just feel so good. Like that's the only way I can explain. It. I just feel so good. I feel so healthy. I literally have not got a cold since I've been vegan. Nice. And I was the girl that was always getting sick, had strep throat at least once a month, like always on antibiotics. And I feel so good now. And I'm just like now starting more into like this fitness thing and weightlifting. Like I feel like I'm building muscle fast. I'm recovering fast. And I just feel amazing. Like that's such a good, I mean, that's such a good thing to say to people when they're like, why are you vegan? Because that right there is something that everybody wants. They want to feel good. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like, why are you, why are you doing this vegan thing? It's like, well, number one, it makes me feel good. And that's like a good, good way to get people interested right there. It's not even, it's not even just like health benefits that makes me feel good, but also knowing like everything that's going on in the world and knowing that I'm not contributing to that industry anymore. Um, you know, and like everything that's going on with this planet, how things are dying. Like I know that I'm doing the best that I possibly can to help everything. So. Yeah, that's, that's a huge benefit too. (laughs) That mind, that mindset benefit or that, yeah. Knowing that you're not contributing to the harm that's going on is huge too. So yeah. Yeah, definitely. So how about your relationship with food? Have you always had a good relationship with food? I know you said you've you've always kind of been in shape and had a fast metabolism. But yeah, with your relationship with food, how has that been? Um, I never really, it's funny, because when I went vegan, I really started to like, break things down more. And like, I, I didn't even know what macros were before I was vegan. Like, it was just never something that I really needed to look into. So yeah, I never really had any like issues with food before I was vegan. But then when I first started going vegan, I felt like I had to be super, super healthy. And I looked at like bread as something that I could not eat, like could not eat bread. I had to have a green juice every day. I had to have a salad every day. Like I was just so focused on eating the cleanest that I possibly could, even though it was vegan. And I felt like it really held me back in a way because I would get these cravings and I'd be like, I need like, I don't know, I guess I was under eating because I was eating super clean. And I would get these cravings like I really just want like ice cream or chocolate right now. And I wouldn't reach for vegan chocolate because I thought it was bad. So I would end up binging on random things like cheese pizza, like animal products. Yeah. So that was like a kind of like a hurdle I needed to get over was to realize that, you know, like it's fine to have some vegan ice cream. Like you're not going to die from it. It's not, that's (laughs) not going to poison you. Um, But that was like a very small phase. And then, yeah, now I just, I really see food as fuel and it's just, you know, now I'm eating more like whole food, plant-based. So I'm eating just things that come from the earth and it just, you know, it just, everything all aligns. It just makes me feel really good. So. And in some of your older videos, you were, I know you mentioned a decent amount, like the high carb, low fat 
vegan lifestyle. Do you still eat mostly that way? Do you even think of your macros in that way anymore? Tell us a little bit about your journey, either if you're still doing that or how you think about food around that kind of topic. Yeah, that's so funny because right now I'm actually just in the middle of editing. I'm doing a what I eat in a day with a chronometer breakdown. And it's funny because I never, ever track my calories or my macros. So when I do these types of videos, I'm like, wow, that's actually interesting. Um, But yesterday, so it was my food from yesterday. And I think I was eating 20% fat, 70% carbs and like 15%, like, I don't know, something like it's generally the same 80, 10, 10. Yeah. Um, But sometimes I'm eating like 60% carbs, but I really don't track it. But before I think I was eating the whole high carb, low fat thing was, it's a really big phase, but I think it's kind of phasing out. People are really starting to understand what high carb, low fat really means. Um, But yeah, so I guess I am still kind of, I'm by default, if you're eating whole food, plant-based, you're eating high carb, low fat. But before the whole high carb, low fat was trying to fit as many bananas into a smoothie as possible so that I was getting enough carbohydrates to feel good. And I definitely felt a lot better than when I was eating animal products. But now that I've switched to eating a more balanced diet and not being afraid of having avocado and having nuts and seeds, because I wouldn't even eat nuts and seeds because I thought they were, you know, just not something I should touch. Um, It's just a more well-rounded and balanced diet has made me feel a lot better. But it is still high carb, low fat. Yeah, that's I that's I eat we eat really similarly. And you are you're a huge inspiration for the way I eat too. And so yeah, I mean, just watching your older videos where it was massive smoothies with tons of bananas, and you were living in a more like tropical area then too, which kind of depends on where you are and what foods available and stuff. But right, yeah, yeah I, I've noticed that you shifted toward more toward like, yeah, like a more balanced way of eating. And I was the same way I was like, Oh, my gosh, I can't like a teeny handful of nuts a day. That's it. Like if I have peanut butter, then then I can't have any more and I shouldn't yeah. have tahini or avocado. And that stuff is good. Right. And it's good for you. I know. Yeah, definitely. It's a, it's a part of a balanced diet. But like I came from when I first went vegan to adding, I found a really old video the other day, actually, of me and Kyle making a smoothie and we're adding just tablespoon after tablespoon of sugar into our banana actual smoothie. sugar <laughs> yeah and I'm just like whoa like I just can't believe that we used to do that but yeah yeah because it was more, more about balance. sugar like sugar is totally if I need as much of that as you want but the fat no which right yeah. there is harmful in itself Yeah. And I think it can also, it can mess with people, especially like people that come from a a horrible past of having to diet and yo-yo dieting and all that stuff. So that's why I'm so about this whole whole foods, plant-based, whole starch, low fat type thing, because it's just a much better like mindset and headspace to be in rather than thinking about sugar and fat all the time. Yeah, it's so true. And you talk a lot about eating intuitively. Like, what does that mean for you? And yeah, how do you how do you practice that on the daily? Yeah, that's a question that I get asked a lot, actually, is a lot of people, they just they don't understand. They're like, how do I eat intuitively? And sometimes it's really hard for me to explain because I've never been in a situation where like I went through a phase where I was like really tracking everything that I was eating. I've always just been, you know, like my mom would be like, are you hungry? And I'd be like, yeah. And she'd be like, let me make you something. And I would eat food. And that's how I, you know, treat myself today is like, Am I hungry? Yes, I'm going to go eat some food. And usually, like now I've kind of gotten myself into a routine because I pretty much eat the same thing every day. But I'll have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And if I need a snack, I'll have a snack. I'm not scared to snack. I'll have some fruit or whatever. But it's always about listening to your body. Like some days I eat less, some days I eat more, and it's totally okay. Like you really, your body knows way more than you do inside your brain. It's so hard to explain, but your body truly, truly knows what it needs. And you really have to just try and tap in and listen to that and not let any outside influence influ- influences affect that because it can really kind of mess, mess you up. <laughs> yeah. And like you said, especially if you, I think a lot of people come into, not a lot of people, but people maybe starting to watch your channel and stuff too, come into this from like background with maybe having an eating disorder and stuff like that. And so the eating intuitively part is a hard thing to kind of grasp, but it is life changing when it happens, yeah. when yeah. you're like, Oh, and even just chewing your food and sitting down with, I think I've watched some of your videos where you're like, I try to have a meal where I'm not just on my computer and yeah, stuff like that it, makes a big that's difference. That's so important. Just having one meal a day where you're just 
sitting there with your food and you're not being distracted by anything because then you can really like tap into how your body's feeling. Cause a lot of, I always say I eat until I'm full and people are like, well, how do you know when you're full? And I'm like, yeah. I just mm-hmm. know, like, I just don't want any more food anymore. But it's so, it's really hard for people to understand that. Cause we've been so like, we're so distracted all the time. We have so many different things that we're like influenced by that we're watching all the time. So it's so good to just have like that one meal where you're just really focused and just appreciating your food and your body at the same time. And it'll take some time, but you'll, you'll start to grasp it. I love that. I think, I think that just in itself is a huge step for most people. Conscious eating, thinking about your food is is a huge first first step. So yeah, you, I mean, you seem like you eat pretty healthy all the time. I mean, you're pretty healthy. You do enjoy some junk, vegan junk food here and there. Um, It seems like, (laughs) it seems like Kyle likes his food a little bit more salted and the snacks a little bit more and stuff. Um, Do you like, how does that work? Does he, does it, is it hard for you to watch him eating, like to go out to eat and he gets like a burger? Do you want the salad you order or are you doing it because you just want to feel good? Like what's, yeah. How's your relationship with that with him? That's a really good question. I love that. Um, He's definitely like, he's been the guy that his mom would buy a bag of Oreos and he would take it down into the basement and eat the whole thing. Like he loves his like processed sugary stuff. And I was the same way. Like that's how I was raised. But now just like really feeling good eating the way I do. Like the more, I always say the more good things you eat, the more good things you crave. So yeah, like sometimes I will go out and eat a greasy burger, but sometimes I see that greasy burger and I'm like, I don't really want to feel like that. Like, I don't don't know. It just doesn't, it's not appetizing to Mm me. But he's definitely been an influence on me. He will go to the grocery store and get some cookies, and I'll be like, I'll have one of those, thank you. But I wouldn't be the one to go to the grocery store and buy the cookies. Yeah. But I think it's good. It's definitely a, a good balance to have. And I always say to people, like, don't be afraid to try things. Like, there are so many amazing, cool vegan things out there. that, And also for me, being on social media to show people that, like, you don't have to eat a plain salad with steamed potatoes just because I enjoy it. You know, some people aren't going to be attracted to that. They, they want to see that greasy burger that you can have that they're used to eating. Um, so yeah, it's a good, it's a good balance. Yeah. And I feel like, I feel like your, uh, ebook is a really good balance of kind of all different kinds of food too. So let's talk a little bit about your ebook because your ebook is amazing. Amazing. I bought it as soon as you released it and I tried some of the recipes. Amazing. And then yesterday I was like, I'm going to go back through it again. And just, I was just like, the pictures are stunning. The way you set it up is beautiful. I just love it. So, um, yeah. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the ebook about what yeah Yeah. it's a little rundown I mean you explained it really well how it's like it kind of shows that balance that's what that was really my goal with the book is to give people everything from you know drinks to desserts that you can have that are similar to what you would be eating before so like I always say there's pizza tacos burgers in there like things that people are used to eating but they're veganized one and they're also made with healthy whole plant foods and they don't taste like cardboard like People will think that, you know, you're not using a ton of oil and salt, that it's not going to taste good, but I proved them wrong with this book. Yes. Um, But yeah, it took a long time for me to create. Like, it was well over a year process and then a really hard six months of just banging out recipes and photographing them and testing them and all that stuff. But yeah, that was really the main goal with the book was to just give people sort of like a kitchen staple book that they can always have in their kitchen that also provides them with information. Like there's also a frequently asked questions section in there that answers like, you know, like how do you get your B12 and all that stuff. Um, and then also just like five tips for staying plant-based or how to start on a plant-based diet. And I've actually had a lot of people say like, Oh, my friend saw your book. I was making something out of it. And she decided she wanted to get her own copy. And now she's like started to go vegan and all this stuff. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, that's exactly like exactly the goal with this book. So it's amazing. So was it at all like an at home project? You had a friend do the photography? Yeah. Um, Kyle actually, when he was working window cleaning, he was working with this guy, Rob, and he went to school for photography and stuff. And at the time we didn't have like a big camera. We just had a little Canon G7X. So we're like, we need somebody who knows what they're doing 
and he did a really awesome job. So he would come over like Amazing. once a week on the weekend and I would make like between eight to 20 recipes per day and just like the kitchen would be a disaster and everything was shot on like the same little table and we would yes. just like put different backgrounds backdrops cloths like everything oh my gosh it was a crazy time but it was so much fun it's amazing those pictures are stunning I mean they're yeah they're beautiful the whole thing yeah he really he really like captured what I was going for so I was I was really happy with the way it turned out it turned out beautiful oh hi monkey <laughs> monkey oh sorry <laughs> cat in the way <laughs> um so what um is your favorite recipe in the ebook if you have I mean that might be hard I'm bad at favorites. everybody asked me that question. I figured like, oh, no. <laughs> I mean <sighs> like yeah I didn't I really know I don't think it. Yeah. I could like pick one I I couldn't either <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I looked at I looked through it again yesterday and I was like girl all of these are amazing like amazing recipes so <laughs> One recipe that comes to mind right now that I would want to make again is the um, potato waffles. Those Ooh, are so good. Those look so, so good. good. I, I don't think I so saw good. those the first time I flipped through it. And yesterday I was like, potato waffles? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I live in Idaho, like, so I'm like, potatoes. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. I love potatoes. Everyone asks me, what's your favorite vegetable? I'm like, potatoes. Potatoes. Potatoes all the way. <laughs> yes. Oh, they're so good and so versatile. <laughs> I know. You can do anything with yeah. potatoes. It's amazing. They're really good. Oh, I'll have to try those. <laughs> what kind of like topping do you put on the potato nachos? Um, cashew sour cream. And then you also yeah. mix them like into the batter as Ooh. well, like in with the mashed potatoes. So they're like really like creamy and delicious mm. inside. <laughs> that is so smart. That is yes. so smart. How do you, so yeah, how do you come up with your recipes? Are you like the kind that you're like, I'm going to sit down and write it out? Or do you just make stuff in the kitchen and then you're like, all right, that's how it goes. Do you, how do you come up with your recipes? I'm more of like a freestyle chef. Like yeah. that's how I've always kind of cooked. And I don't know, like I just, when I had to make the recipes for the book, I would be making them and I'm like, oh crap, I didn't, I didn't measure that. I don't know how much of this spice I put in because I'm just right. like, here we go. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, that took a little bit of like time and concentration. But yeah, I'm definitely more of like a freestyle chef. And then as far as inspiration goes, I was for that book, it was more like I wanted to veganize recipes that I was used to eating before that, you know, like made me feel good and made me feel like I wasn't really like missing out on anything. So I have recipes in there that like my mom used to make like a casserole and like um, cookies that my grandma used to make and stuff. And I just like veganized it. So it was more so just taking inspiration from what I used to eat and then just trying to make it my own. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Because most people, yeah, have recipes from their childhood or from things like, you know, their past or family gatherings and get togethers that they're like, yeah. I don't know what to do without that. And you seem yeah. you're so good at yeah veganizing recipes and making them amazing. So it's just so it's so easy too, like to for or at least for me to just like take a recipe and it's like, okay, like milk, sub plant milk or whatever. And just, you know, it's just it's people think it can, it's a lot more complicated than it actually is. So it's so true. I mean, even, yeah, even with some of my, my eBooks and recipes, people will be like, how much exactly of that? Or I put this much in and it's, you know, and I'm like, just, I would recommend just like, stop trying to measure unless you're baking. <laughs> yes. Baking is a science. <laughs> yes. I am not the biggest fan of baking because I don't like to measure. <laughs> But that's, that's one of my tips I'll tell people. I'm like, just start trying to cook without measuring everything. Like look at a recipe and use the guidelines, like, but just start dumping in and tasting and then mm -hmm. it gets easier to cook. Cause you're not having yes. to be dig out a recipe, follow it completely. Yeah. And I think that your, your ebook is great for that. I think make a few of the recipes in there and then it starts to kind of click in people's heads. Like, Oh, I could make this, but add this next time and add yeah. this next time. So yeah, yeah I, I love a lot of e people, um, giving me like photos of like recreations and they're like oh I added this and I'm like wow that's so cool I have to try it like that next time so it's really awesome that's awesome that's awesome yeah. and you can find your ebook on your website your yeah. website's beautiful as well Maddie oh, dot, yeah it's amazing did you do it yourself <laughs> um it's a Shopify store so I purchased the theme and I it was I spent forever looking for the proper theme but once I found it I was like buying this yes it's perfect it's perfect for you it looks so well put together and the colors are nice and your photos are beautiful so I love it so yeah maddielimburner.com click on the ebook tab and it's there yep. how much yep. is it for people it's, that are uh 
$35 Canadian. So I think it's like $27.99 US. Cool. Yeah. But if you use the uh, coupon code vegan20, you can get 20% off. Yes, that is awesome. I was going to ask about that because I know you have that sometimes. I'm like, oh, yeah. maybe she'll give our little listeners yeah. a discount yeah. code. So vegan20. vegan 20. Cool. Yeah. Perfect. And I'll put links for all of this in the show notes. So for those of you watching or listening, go to those. You can just click on it and get her ebook like that too, because you should. It is amazing. Thank you. So let's start talking a little bit about your YouTube channel, since that's kind of like your biggest thing. I mean, you have a yes. ton of subscribers on there. Um, so yeah. when when did you start your YouTube channel? I started almost three years ago now. Okay. But I was not posting consistently until I went to Thailand about like six months later. I just kind of started because I was like, eh, I kind of want to dabble in this. But then we went to the bike fest with all the other vegans in Chiang Mai. And I just saw everyone else who was always making content. Like there were cameras out everywhere. And then it would be like this one time in the afternoon, everyone would be going to edit and then we go to dinner. So it really just like that community really inspired me to like start banging out content and I really enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, that's when I started. And then, uh, once we got to Australia after that, um, that's when it really started to grow a little bit more was when I started doing the recipes. <laughs> that's when I started doing recipes was in Australia and I did, um, a double chocolate chip cookie recipe. And that was like one of my recipe videos that like kind of blew up. And I was like, wow, like people actually want to see recipes and I enjoy doing them. So I'm going to keep doing them. And I think that's what really helped me to grow. And then of course, the what I eat in a day videos, that's what everyone wants to see is the what I eat in a day Always. videos. So. They're so helpful. I mean, and every day is usually, I mean, yeah, you eat a little bit similar every day, but I mean, you could do those every day and people would still watch them. People love them. Totally. totally. I know everyone's like, I have like over a hundred now and everyone's like, you need to do more what I eat in a day videos. I'm like, there's more coming. Always. Don't worry. Don't ask. I'm going to keep doing them. I will them. keep doing them. Yeah. People love those videos. So yeah, that's kind of those are kind of the videos that you think kind of helped propel your channel and kind of get that growth yes. started. And then also, uh, my biggest hitting video is the Hawaii house tour video. <laughs> I saw that million views. Yeah. The one where you're like standing like that in front yeah. of the house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That and one's got a lot like, of views. <laughs> yeah. We made that one. It was totally on a whim. We were just like, uh, we want to make a video today. I was like, let's do a house tour. And I was in my bikini, we were about to go to the beach and Kyle's like, whatever, like, let's just do it right now. And it was like not planned or anything like that. But I think that's why it blew up was because I was in my bikini. But that really helped me to gain a lot of exposure as well. Right? Like, oh, how's two in a bikini? Yeah. Sweet. It's weird that sometimes that your most watched videos are ones that you were like, I was not even like, trying or planning on that. Like, that's okay. The way it always happens like all of my biggest hitting videos I'm like oh why that one and then there's videos that I like try so hard on editing I'm like yes it's gonna be so good and then like nobody watches it and I'm like darn it right <laughs> it's so weird how that happens you're like all right yeah. I guess I guess that's but then a lot of times it's like well I'm making videos for me too you know so it's like I want to make ones that I want to make so yeah exactly it's just yeah. interesting to see what people like and don't like <laughs> I know it's crazy the internet is a crazy place. <laughs> it really is. It really is. So do you have a favorite video that you've created? Is there one that just sticks out like, oh, I'm so proud of that video. This one's my favorite. I mean, in the moment when I'm creating them, yes. But then I look back on them and I'm like, I was so proud of this video. But I, I now know so many different things that I would do differently. But I would say all the ones that I made in Kauai and Hawaii, like they were just like, I loved making them. I loved editing them. I loved being there. It was just everything really resonated with me there. So I think those videos are probably my favorite videos. Yeah, your travel vlogs are really fun to watch too. <laughs> yeah, they're just like so fun to make. And it's just like such a firsthand experience. Like we're experiencing all these new things at the same time as these people are watching us experience this for the first time. So it's just so it's real really cool. and really fun. Yeah, it is really cool. Um, yeah, I love, I, like I said, I love your travel vlogs. I love okay. traveling and I know you guys love to travel too. Uh, yes. Where's your favorite place that you've traveled? Definitely Kauai. Kauai. <laughs> Hands down. Hands down. It's just, oh, uh, the nature there, the vibes there, like everything. It's just such a small island and there's a really nice community of people that are all, I just feel like so grounded and so 
with it. They care about the environment. They really take care of the land that they live on. And it's just like the nature there is literally like Jurassic Park. Like I could not believe my eyes. I'm like, this is real. Like this is on planet earth. Sometimes I was just so blown away. So yeah, definitely my favorite place. And I can't wait to go back. (laughs) Do you have plans to go back? Um, we're supposed to be traveling this winter because we're renting this place out. We only got it for six months. So we're going to be traveling beginning of November. So we haven't really decided where we're going. The other day we were kind of dabbling with going back to Australia, but I'm like, I really want to go back to Hawaii. So we might do like a mix of both this winter. I don't know. Nice. Nice. Yeah. You guys usually try to get out of there during the cold months. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's just... It's like, like today, for example, it is so gray out. There's no sunshine and just, it's so cold. It gets so cold here that it's just, you be, you get like cabin fever. You have to be inside all the time. Like you can't even go outside for a walk. Even if it's a little cold, it's just that cold that like you can't even breathe. It's so cold outside. Yeah. It's nice to just be a snowbird and go and live in the tropics. That's perfect. It works for you guys. You guys seem like you have a blast doing it. So I'm sure other people are like, that's so smart. (laughs) I'm going to do that too. Well, I mean, it's also like our lifestyle too. Like a lot of people can't do what we do. And I'm so grateful that, you know, we've had, we have this lifestyle and we're so fortunate enough that we can work online and make money online so that we can work anywhere and be able to travel. So life's really good. And I'm really, really thankful. (laughs) It is. It is. And you've, I mean, you've worked so hard. I mean, you, a lot of people don't know how hard, I mean, just even planning your videos, get set, getting up your, getting your camera set up, making sure your batteries are charged and your memory cards clean and then filming. And then, I mean, there's so much that goes into each video, putting the tags, writing the description. So I know, I know it's crazy. I mean, people only really see what we put out there, right? So they're like, wow, you have this amazing life. Like, all you have to do is make videos, all this stuff. And it's like, yeah, but you don't know that this is like 24 seven job. Like, I always tell people they're like, don't you love doing this more than like a full time job? And I'm like, yes. And they're like, well, like, you all, all you have to do is make videos now. So you must have like so much free time. And I'm like, no, like I'm working more now than I was when I was working a full time nine to five job. But I am so much more happier and I'm loving every minute of it that it doesn't it doesn't really feel like work to me. Yeah, it, it it's and being on social media, I mean, it's that instant. I mean, someone can message you, someone can comment on your video. I mean, it, it's that instant people want and then they can see that you read their question and you're like, I should respond. I mean, yeah. it's that pe- people want that instant access. And so it really is like 24 seven job. Totally. It's not like where you just clock out and you're like, all right, done for the day. Yeah. I, mean, I definitely do that at night where I'm like, okay, putting away the phone, putting away the computer. But still like, you know, people have urgent questions. And I always feel like, you know, if I was that person, I would want that person to respond to me right away. So I always see it from the other side. And I'm like, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to answer all these questions. And, and it's awesome. You are so, so responsive on your YouTube channel and on your Instagram account. And there's so many people that follow you and are subscribed and you answer almost every single question every single time or respond. And it's just, I mean, just so try. special. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. I mean, you can't always. There's a yeah, shit ton yeah, of people that. <laughs> yeah, but you do such a good job and it makes it feel like you're a real person. And yeah, it's awesome. I love, I love you. your social media presence is just really inspiring and you're definitely making a huge impact. So oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah I it's love just it. that part is so important to me is having that proper connection with the people that are actually watching my videos. Like, I remember, I remember getting my first hundred views and I was thinking to myself, like, imagine I had a hundred people in front of me right now. Like those hundred people clicked on my video. They wanted to see what I was doing. So now it's like, you know, like my latest, what I eat in a day video had 60,000 views. I'm like, that is so mind blowing to me. And like, I appreciate every single person that is there. So if they have a question or, you know, they're, they're taking time out of their day to write something to me, it's like, they deserve an answer. Yeah. You want to respond, you want to help out. And it, I mean, you're an empath. So it sounds like, I mean, that's another reason you love animals. You have that. So same for humans. It's like, well, I want to help. And then the bottom line, it's like, okay, if I help this person with this question, maybe they'll like eat more vegan, which then in turn helps less animals be harmed and the planet. So like it's, it's another driving force, which kind of leads me into my next question. 
I'm sure there are that you have days where you're just, I don't want to create content and maybe even weeks or periods of time. Um, what do you do to like kind of find more motivation and gather the inspiration to, to start creating again? Or do you sometimes just say, I am not going to do it. I'm taking a break. How do you get, get through those like kind of slumps? I mean, I, I was, I was just in a, a little bit of a slump when we got back. It was like those post travel blues where you're just like, nobody wants to see my day to day life. Like I'm, I have no like creative energy right now. Um, but yeah, they definitely, those time periods definitely do happen and they happen to everybody, whether they show it or not. Um, but it's more so just about like, I always say your environment is so key to the way that you're feeling. So for me, it was just like, I was, I had this feeling that, you know, like my environment is not helping me out anymore. Like I'm not feeling inspired by my environment anymore. And I'm not doing the best things for my body anymore. I wasn't sleeping properly. I was on a weird sleeping schedule. So it was just, there were other outside factors that I wasn't really thinking about. So I just took a little bit of time. I was still making like one video a week, but I was just really focusing on like taking care of myself and self-love and, you know, getting to bed on time and taking yoga classes, you know, just like the basics. And then also we moved and now we're in our own space. We're living on our own. I have you know, there's, there's beautiful white kitchen with natural light. Like it's just, you know, it's an, I'm in an inspiring environment now. Um, but I guess for a lot of people, you know, like that's not really attainable. You can't always change your environment, but it's always a good thing to just kind of like take yourself out of that situation and look at things as a whole and look at like, you know, like what is really making me feel like this and do I just need to take a break or, you know, do I need to take better care of myself? And it's really looking inward is always what I tend to do. It's that's I love that answer, because it's so true. I mean, yeah, everybody, no matter what job, anything you're doing, yeah, you go through slumps and just have kind of down days or weeks or whatever. Yeah. But it's true, like looking inwards and, and kind of looking at all aspects of your life and being like, what should I kind of focus on right now? Yeah. I and also that. like realizing that like, you know, you're gonna have these periods, you know, it's not something that you did, like, don't blame yourself. I tend to blame myself a lot. Like, why aren't I doing this? Like, why can't I create right now? And it's really just about, you know, looking inward, but also realizing that you're gonna have these down periods, and you can't go up if you don't come down. And, you know, after this big down, you know, you're gonna have that big upward spring where you feel really creative and feel like super excited to create and do whatever. So it's life. (laughs) It's, It's so true. Like everything we're explaining is just so just life too. I mean, yeah, not just work, but ups and downs of life. It's so, yeah. it's so true. Everything. You have to go through that low to get back up to that high. And just kind of, I've been really just trying to kind of enjoy being in that low time, like enjoying feeling like, oh, I'm at least still feeling, even though this is a shitty feeling, like I'm a human experiencing this. Like totally. I got to enjoy this while I'm in it. Cause I know I'm not going to always be in it. So yeah. Yeah. That's that really true too. as well. Finding, yeah. finding ways to kind of, yeah, it sounds weird, but yeah, enjoy those feelings anyway, it does help. Yeah. Do you have like a, a favorite like YouTuber that, that you look to for inspiration or if you're, yeah, and down one of those slumps or motivation or anything like that, they're just like, I'm going to put on this person or um, do you have like I a favorite like, YouTuber in general? I honestly like don't even have the time to even watch right? YouTube. I totally know who <laughs> um, you mean. But I, I do like, I listen to Gary Vaynerchuk. I mean, he's like, that will make you exactly like he he always you know like he always says he calls people out like on on their bullshit and it's like it's so true once you're like if you're in one of those like down periods you kind of start to get into like this negative pattern of thinking and he really in some of his things like there's some things that really just resonate with me that it's like yeah you just called me out on that and that's something that I need to change so he's really the only person that I spend long periods of time listening to really I love that. I was not expecting you to say that at all, but I love Gary Vee. Like, read all his books. I, I mean, he scares the shit out of me, too. Like, you're like... Totally. You don't even if want... If I ever wa- met him in person, I'd be so intimidated. Right? I'd be like, oh, God, I'm going to run away the other way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but so inspirational, especially when you're having those kind of, like, low moments, because he'll just kick your ass into gear. Like, he's totally. go, go, go. So you're like, okay. 
And he's like, you know, like, life is so short. Like, you're so young. You still have all this time. But, you know, like, use every day as something that you can do to work towards what your end goal is instead of just sitting there and dwelling in that negativity of not being able to create, like, take that energy and put it into something else that's going to make you, you know, work toward that goal. I love that. Speaking of goals, a new goal that it seems like you've had in the past maybe year or so, correct me if I'm wrong, is like strength training pretty regularly, like lifting those weights, not just your at home workouts, which are killer and amazing, by the (laughs) way, if you guys haven't checked out her other um, YouTube channel, Mad Fit, amazing. She's on Instagram as well. Oh my gosh, her at home workouts are amazing. And you've got gym, like gym workouts there on the channel too. So yeah, what's, what's, how's that, how's that been going? You, you, you start, you weren't really, you were, you weren't really strength training until, yeah, am I right? Like about maybe a year, a little more than that ago? Yeah. I mean, I was never really consistent with it until we were in Mexico, December. So okay. really not that long yeah, at all, okay. but um, it wasn't really something that I was totally passionate about because we were cycling and just kind of like traveling all that stuff. But then I really started to feel like I'm, cause I was a dancer for my whole life. Like I danced for 16 years competitively. That's what kept me in shape. That was my creative outlet. It was just a place that I really like put my passion into. And then I didn't have that anymore. And I didn't really fall in love with cycling that much. And then we started going to the gym and I was like kind of into it. And then I don't really know what clicked, but all of a sudden I was just like, I'm going to do this. Like I am going to strengthen my body because being a dancer, I had no upper body strength. I had a lot of back issues because I had zero muscle there. So I was getting rib issues and all that stuff. And yeah, it was just like, I'm going to do this. And I started doing it and it's been since December now and it's been going really, really, really good. And it's been really fun to be able to share that with everybody too. And to have like, you know, it's sort of like my next kind of creative outlet is doing something totally different from veganism. It's just really more focused on exercise and fitness. Yeah. It's so exciting to watch like your progress. I think even today on your Instagram, you like pro- posted some progress pictures yes. or maybe it was last night. Oh yeah. my gosh, It was crazy. Like I was just going through that this morning and I'm like five weeks ago, I had like these little baby biceps and now I have like actual muscles yeah. on my arm. Now. Like, yeah. It's crazy. Like I've never, I used to, I told Kyle like yesterday, I was like, I used to grab my arm and I could feel my bone and now I can't feel my bone anymore. I have muscle. muscle. So yeah, you're, uh, you're getting ripped. Like seriously, I was like, damn girl, you're killing it. It's fun. It's just, and I enjoy doing it. It's not like I'm doing it for the aesthetic purpose. And I feel like that's what a lot of people, when they look at it, they're like, oh, it's just, you know, for the games, for, you know, the photos. And it's like, yeah, it's cool to that see helps. those photos and it's cool to see your body change, but it's also like that feeling like I was able to do my first pull up like the other week and just yeah. like literally getting my eyes above the bar and my chin above the bar was just like all these like things were going off inside yeah. me. I was like, this was so amazing. I can't believe I just did yeah. that. Like it was so cool. Something I've never felt before. And you get that with everything that you're doing that's new in the gym that you're able to accomplish and yeah, it's, it's just so much fun. I love, yeah, like setting goals and then achieving them like that. You're like, oh my God, that's so exciting. Yeah. yeah. I and love I, that. I said in December, I was like, I want to be able to do one or two pull ups by the end of this year. And I've already been able to accomplish nice. that. So. I, I, yeah. I can't do a pull up. <laughs> so good job. Like, honestly, I've been watching you on that little journey. I'm like, that's so inspiring. I want to get like a pull up bar and try to practice doing that. <laughs> And then like you do it and you're like, I can do it. And it gives you Mm -hmm. confidence and it's all, it's really a lot about mindset. Like that day that I did the pull up, I was not feeling so good. And I was just like, Oh, I'm going to try. And the first time I did it, it's like, as soon as you really start to do it, you, there's something in your brain is just like, Nope, you can't do it. You can't do it. And then so I like came off and I was like, wow, darn, like, I really thought I was going to be able to do it. And then I was like, no, I'm going to do this. And I told Kyle, I was like, watch me, I'm going to do this. And then I did it. And I was like, it's totally, it's all in my mind. Like, I could have done that, like, probably like a week ago, if I really wanted to, but it's a lot about mindset. And that's what I love about training in the gym is like, it's, I'm not only training my body, but I'm also training my mind to become stronger as well. So that is true. A lot. I mean, a lot of this is all mindset, really. So especially, Yeah. yeah, I mean, exercise, 
for a lot of people is really hard to get into a routine and to do often. And I, yeah, I think mindset is just huge. So I'm glad you brought that up. Do you have a, um, hi monkey. (laughs) Do you have a a set routine when you go to the, like a weekly routine that you're like Monday's arms, Tuesday's back? Like, do you have a set routine that you follow? Or is that again, like a more intuitive exercise thing that you do? Yeah. I mean, it it is more of like an intuitive exercise. It's not like I have set days where like Mondays I'm doing this. It's really like, if I need a break, I'll take a break. And if that's a day where I'm supposed to be training legs, like, oh, well, train it the next day. Um, so, but usually like on a weekly basis, I go to the gym between five to six days a week. Um, just because I love it. I mean, that's not always for everybody, but I love doing it. Um, and I usually will split it up. So like I'm doing legs and booty one day and then back and biceps and then more of like a chest tricep day. So that's three. And then the next day will be sort of like a full body type day where I'm just doing fun exercises that I enjoy. And then I'll always throw in some kind of like hit workout or ab style circuit at the end of some workouts and throw that in on the full body day. So it's really kind of like up in the air. I just kind of like to have fun with it, but I do sort of have like a small structured routine. Like an idea of what you want to work on throughout the week and kind of yeah. know what yeah. targeting, which is smart instead of just going and being like, Oh, I guess I'll. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I, I know what I'm going to do before I get in the gym and I, I already kind of know like how I'm going to split my workout. So that's helpful. What about, um, cardio? Most people don't like doing cardio at all. Um, what's your favorite way to get some cardio in? I mean, for a while it was cycling and that's all I did was cardio. And, um, I think that really, really helped me to build up a really good base. Um, so I got really lean at one point, like before I started, um, training and I was like, okay, I need to stop doing cardio because, (laughs) and it was hard for me because I love doing it. So I haven't been doing that much cardio recently. I've started to introduce it a little bit more. And um, I really like the stair machine. I'll go on that, kind of do that as like a warm up. Um, And then I also throw in like HIIT workouts. So some of the stuff that you'll see like on my MadFit YouTube channel, I'll just throw in one of those workouts at the end, just because I really do think it's important. And I have noticed a difference. Like I wake up in the morning with a little bit more of a puffier face because I'm not sweating as much because when I'm lifting weights, I'm not you know, getting that full sweat on. So yeah, doing like a hit workout or something like that, just something fun to get me motivated to do cardio because taking some time off, it has been hard to kind of incorporate it back in. Yeah. Cardio can be hard for a lot of people and they're just like, I don't, and then they just don't exercise at all. And I've heard you mention that before, like find something that is fun for you. Yeah. And like, even though I'm sharing all this progress in the gym and, you know, people have all these goals of how, you know, they want to, you know, look like me and whatever, but they don't like going to the gym. And they're like, how can I do that? And I'm like, it's fine. Like you need to find, I'm, I'm doing this because I enjoy doing it. Like I literally love every minute I'm in the gym. And for a lot of people, that's not the case. And if it, if that's not the case, you're going to end up not wanting to go. You're going to have less motivation and that's not what you want. You want to be able to look forward to what you're doing and really enjoy what you're doing. Cause then you're going to push yourself harder as well while you're in it. Um, so yeah, it's all about like having fun and finding something that you enjoy because you know, why do it if you don't enjoy it? It's so true. And thinking of it, like you said, is, is not as, as much for the aesthetics that should be a side benefit, but for wanting to do it because yeah, it's fun or it's good for your body, Mm -hmm. makes you sleep better, all of the things. (laughs) And I think, you know, cause I was a dancer for 16 years. I never looked at that as like a form of exercise, but it did really keep me fit. So doing that for so long, I think really helped me in that mindset of like finding something that you enjoy because I loved going to dance and I did it for like four to seven hours per day. And that's not something that a lot of people could do unless they really loved it. So, yeah. Yeah. So you danced competitively. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I danced since I was three, but started competitive when I was seven. 
And then that was like my whole life. That's awesome. <laughs> and you did, did I know that I saw you had point shoes, which I danced competitively yeah. as well, but not as like That's intensely cool. as you did. But yeah, um, <laughs> in little Pocatello, Idaho. So it wasn't like this <laughs> big deal. But um, did you do all kinds of dance like jazz, modern? I mean, did you have a favorite? What were you? Yeah, I did. I mean, I did everything except for like ballroom type stuff because that's cool. not what like my studio taught. But I even did musical theater. Like I sung on nice. stage. Nice. Um, I I really loved ballet, and everyone always called me the ballerina because I always had the ballerina body. Totally. <laughs> um, that and then more of like contemporary modern jazz style was always my favorite. You know, I have the long legs, and I was super flexible, so it was just it was a lot of fun for me. I did tap. I hated tap, quit that when I was 12. I didn't like that. I remember like being on stage and having to fake so many (laughs) moves because I couldn't do them properly. And like, yeah, so I ended up quitting that. I did hip hop and I always just look like a ballerina trying to do hip hop. So (laughs) yeah. Would you ever like consider getting back into dancing? Like, yeah. Yes. 1000%. It's been, I don't even know how many years, like almost four years now since I've taken a class and I quit. I didn't quit. I people are always like, why did you quit? I'm like, I didn't quit. I just, it was my time where I was transitioning into veganism. I started YouTube. I wanted to travel and just, I was going to do professional dancing. Like I was going to do cruise ships and I was going to be in music videos and all this stuff. And I was like, I just, I don't know. I'm not really feeling it right now. Like traveling the world and, you know, meeting new vegan people is what I really want to do. So then I just started doing that. But then I I just haven't gone back to it. But this summer, I'm like really stoked. I, I'm going to go take some classes. Nice. I'm scared, but I'm stoked. <laughs> That's a good sign. That's a good sign. Usually that little bit of fear is like, I should do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. I got to conquer that fear. I'm such a perfectionist. And that's how ex- exactly how I was when I was in class was I always had to be doing it to the best of my ability. And now I'm scared that like, I won't be in that mindset, but I'm definitely a perfectionist. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that'll be so fun. You'll have to share with us your oh, I definitely journeys. Will. Okay. I'm so excited cool. for that. Yay. Um, so as far as weightlifting, just because I honestly want to know, um, you've been inspiring me a lot to want to start like getting into the, to a, an actual gym and lifting weights. Cause I have some like at home weights. What mm-hmm. would you give, like, what would some of your top tips be for like people who are just like really just starting out and wanting to get into it a little bit? Would they need to hire a personal trainer or is watching your channel enough? Like, what are some tips for people that are like, what do I do? I want to start. Yeah, I totally get it. Like everyone's like, I want to get into the gym, but I'm scared. Like I'm nervous because everyone's looking at me and I'm like, girl, we've all been there before. I was there once where I was like, am I doing this right? People are looking at me. I'm probably doing this wrong, but it's totally fine. I had Kyle with me, which was amazing because he already kind of knew what he was doing. But I always tell people like there are personal trainers at the gym. You know, you don't necessarily have to hire them and, you know, go week to week with them. But if you're unsure how to do something or you don't know how to work a machine, always ask a personal trainer because that's what they're there to do. They're going to help you. You might feel like an idiot in the moment. You might look back on it and be like, wow, that was really dumb, (laughs) but you need to learn. So doing that and also, um, just finding inspiration from other people online, like social media and fitness on social media is huge now like especially on Instagram there are so many girls out there that are posting one minute videos of different you know exercises that you can do that you can follow that you can save to your phone you bring your phone to you with the gym you take some dumbbells you go into the corner and then you just practice that routine so I think doing that and just finding a simple kind of like beginner style routine that you can follow that you end up feeling comfortable with that you don't necessarily have to use all these fancy machines or resistance bands or whatever um yeah, just doing that, but definitely finding inspiration online and just really teaching yourself. That's how I learned. It was really ended up like just finding, you know, other people online and stealing stuff from their routines and figuring out what works for me. So, yeah, there's so much online, so much free stuff online that it's like, yeah, go to YouTube, find, I mean, there's probably the correct form for this machine type it in you could probably find a youtube video on it <laughs> literally i've done that so many times <laughs> nice. like i'm doing an exercise and i'm like i don't feel like i'm doing this properly and kyle's like i'm not sure like i've never done that before so i'm like youtube how to do That's, this and yeah. i watch the person do it and i'm like oh yeah i was doing that wrong and then i learned from it so yeah that's so yeah. smart i i played basketball in high school and weightlifted then so I know like some proper form but when I actually like maybe 
eight years ago, tried to get back into weightlifting. It wasn't like you had smartphones where you could bring it and do and search like that. So I've never even thought about that until right now. Like, how do I use this machine? And you don't even have to then talk to somebody at the gym if you don't nope. want to just keep to yourself. It's Good tip. Crazy. <laughs> Internet. I, I mean, it's, it's insane. It is. It really is. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and so, yeah, kind of talking about the internet and social media and exercising and all of that. You're a Vivo Life ambassador. Am I pronouncing that right? Vivo? Yes. Yes. Okay. You're Vivo yes. Life ambassador. <laughs> um, tell me a little bit about Vivo Life and what it means to be an ambassador and kind of why you chose to do that. Totally. Yeah. I mean, I've been with them now for a few months and I mean, everyone just on that team is so amazing. They're an entire vegan company. So everyone who works for them is vegan. That's their whole focus was to, you know, like people want to, people want supplements. They need to try vegan supplements. They need vegan protein. They need, you know what I mean? Um, and they're also really good with like, they do carbon neutral shipping. So they think about everything. It's not, it's like a full circle thing with them, which I love. Um, they like heavy metal test every single ingredient that goes into their products. And like, it just came out that like Vega, had it's crazy because I used to take Vega all the time but they have like high levels of lead or something in their like lots of heavy metals in their products which is really sad um but yeah they're an amazing company their products are literally like I used to work at a health food store and I worked there for four and a half years and all the reps for all of the supplement companies would come in I would get all this free stuff so I have tried literally everything on the market (laughs) and Vivo Life just the quality, the taste, like everything is just so on point. And when both Kyle and I tried it for the first time, they sent us this huge package full of everything and they were super generous with it. I was like, whoa. Mm. And we tried it and we were just like, holy crap. Like this is game changing. I totally understand what these people are saying when they're like, this is the best stuff on the market. And you really don't truly get that experience until you actually try it. But yeah, it's amazing. And just being on the team with all of those amazing other ambassadors, like people that I used to watch and never even thought that I would like meet, never mind being on like a team with them, like really promoting veganism and vegan supplements and stuff like that. It's just, it's been a really, really awesome time. Yay. I'm so, yeah. Congratulations on that. When I heard, when I saw yeah. that, I was like, oh, that's exciting. Yeah. It's a really it's cool, really fun. yay. Good. Yeah. So in the past, I, I feel like I there I had re- recalled you saying that, like, no, I don't need protein powders. And I feel like even Kyle would be like, yeah, no, we don't need that. Yeah. You can get it from your food. Yeah. What kind of, um, yeah, what made you change your mind about that? Was it trying them and seeing results? Or, yeah, kind of what, what made you change your mind? Yeah, I mean, I think it goes back to, like, what we were talking about um, a while ago about uh, how I kind of had that weird kind of time where I was really strict with what I was eating and, you know, supplements and protein powders were a big no, like you don't need it. It's bad for you, all this stuff. And so there was sort of like a fear around it, I would say. Okay. But, and I do believe, I always say you can most, you do not need protein powders. You don't like, there's no way around it. I'm not going to be like, you can't lie yeah, about that. You yeah. can get all the protein that you need from plants for sure. But trying the products and also, you know, really seeing progress with them and feeling a lot better using them and just it also having that reassurance that like, yes, I know for sure that I'm getting more than enough that I need, especially with training so much and so consistently now. It's like I really do want to make sure that I'm giving my body enough and not, you know, not giving it enough protein or whatever. So trying it, seeing the quality, and then also like experiencing the benefits from it. And also like the greens powder is the best greens powder I've ever tasted. Like that is the one thing that I use the most. I use it every single day. And just like, I'm not not really a huge greens person. I don't really like to eat salads that much. And so just making sure that like, I know that I'm totally covered if I don't eat greens that day or whatever. So yeah, I mean, I guess it is sort of like a little switch um, that we had, but it was, it it was good. I I mean, and like in my, before I, like when I was kind of thinking of questions to ask you, I was like, I mean, it kind of coincided when you started really lifting, like lifting weights, you know? So I, I, you know, it seems like for people who are really trying to build muscle, like you are, that it might be something beneficial to include. 
Yeah. I mean, if you're really not exercising that much, like, like I said, you can definitely get all the protein you need. And if you're not extensively, you know, ripping your muscles every single day, you probably don't need it. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was, it was everything all just happened at like the same time. And it was like, if I wasn't lifting and if I was cycling around the world at that point, it would have been like, no, like, I'm sorry guys, I don't really need it, but it all just like kind of happened at once. So yeah worked out perfectly do you yeah. so I've never tried Vivo Life I'm, I'm gonna try some um do you have like a product you would recommend or a couple products for people just starting out like you know all the flavors and everything if sometimes people get overwhelmed what would you kind of recommend I mean literally anything that you get from them not even being biased people think I'm so bad <laughs> but literally anything from them you will enjoy like cool. the flavors of all the protein are amazing right now I'm really loving they reformulated their vanilla and cacao and they're really good I use the vanilla the most out okay. of all of them just because it's the most neutral and you can put it in any kind of smoothie or whatever um, but the greens powder like I said is the thing that I use all the time I put it in every single smoothie they have a berry flavor and a pineapple lemongrass mm. I love them both equally mm. I don't think I could pick a favorite but the pineapple lemongrass goes really well in like smoothies with bananas and mango mm. and stuff like that yeah definitely mm. one of my faves mm. I'll have to try some I always see it I'm like oh I'm gonna need to get some of that stuff <laughs> <laughs> especially yeah, if I'm gonna start like lifting which I really want to start doing <laughs> um yeah, what about Kyle does he have a favorite does he he does that BCAA is that I yes. don't even know what that is <laughs> so branch chain amino acids okay. they help with um you know muscle recovery and the breakdown minimizing like muscle yes. breakdown and stuff like that so it's good to have before your workout it helps you like sustain your energy as well um but yeah I don't really take the BCAAs because okay. there's also BCAAs included in their protein powders and I just don't good really feel like I need that extra little boost but Kyle really likes it um, and he just mixes that with water. He loves that. And he loves the salted maca caramel protein because mm. it is insane. Like you mix it with banana ice cream and it's Ooh. like, like have no dessert. So, yeah, it's <laughs> literally like dessert. So oh, good. that sounds so good. That sounds yeah. good. I'll definitely have to try, try some stuff for sure. Um, speaking of Kyle, since he's like kind of your other half. Um, so you guys have been together as long as you've been vegan, it kind of coincided at the same time, yes. which was, yeah. so how long have you guys been together? It will be five years in October. Oh, that's exciting. Congratulations. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> that's doesn't exciting. feel like it's been that long. Right. All, Isn't but... that weird? You're like, how yeah. see? it's like, it feels like it's been that long, but then it also doesn't like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you yeah. guys spend a lot of time together. 24 seven. What's like, that? We're always together. <laughs> yeah. What's crazy. that like? I mean, we can get it on, can get on each other's nerves. Um, that's just natural being together with somebody for that long. But we used both used to work full time jobs, and we would only be able to see each other for like a few hours on the weekend. And like we both remember like being together and being like, wouldn't it be so cool if we could just spend every day together, like just doing really fun things, like just enjoying life. And now we're literally doing that. And it's just been such a whirlwind, like so crazy that this has all happened over like five years. So we're just like so grateful. And I think that's like what it all comes down to. Like just, you know, like we're not we're not like a bitter couple towards each other. Like we get along. We're on the same page. We're just so grateful and happy with life that it's just it's really awesome. <laughs> Yay. I love that. And does he so does he help you like with parts of your business what does he help you with he's like the behind the scenes guy so mm. the the stuff that people don't really see <laughs> um he's the one he's the camera techie guy like I literally don't even know how to work our camera like yes. he sets it all up for me and stuff oh that's so nice um he takes all of my photos which he has been so like he's improved so much he's really got a love for photography now like so he takes all my photos and he, he helps me a lot with like the website and customer service type stuff and all that kind of stuff that I'm, I don't really know anything about. Um, and then again, it was like the book and stuff like that. Like he was, he was, we didn't have a dishwasher. <laughs> he's just okay. always there, you know, like just like helping out and, you know, he's just my other half that does what needs to be done that I can't do. So that's amazing. It's so supportive yeah. and so inspirational to watch. It's just like, Oh my God, he's so helpful and so loving and caring. And 
that's so nice to have someone with that help you with that back end stuff too. That's like, I want to, you want to create the content. Like, that's what you like, I like you're wanting to put out the content and he helps yeah. it so that you can do a lot more of that, which is so yeah. awesome. Yeah. I mean, like I, I really like, he was the one who pushed me to start doing all of this. And I mean, I'm just so grateful for him. Like I, I really could not do what I do without him. And I mean, I'm like the star of the show. Everything's under my name yet. He's still like, hundred percent like my biggest cheerleader like wants oh. to do everything he, he literally wakes up and is like what can I do for you today like what are we doing today and it's oh. just like I just I can't believe that's that amazing you actually exist <laughs> that is amazing well yeah. it's like meant to be because you're because of him you're putting out so much content that is helping exactly. the world on this huge yeah. level so you guys are power couple <laughs> yeah. I love he's Kyle I love best. both of you guys and he oh. started his own YouTube channel Yes, he's been slacking. Is he? Okay. He he hasn't really had like the motivation to kind of, when we were in LA, he was like, yeah, I'm going to start this channel. I'm going to start vlogging. It's going to be so much fun. And he's so good at vlogging. Like he's more like the, the real style vlogs. He doesn't do a lot of editing. And I'm, I really like to do like the cool edits and different style Mm. shots and stuff, which can frustrate him. Cause I'm like, no, like get a better shot. (laughs) It doesn't matter. (laughs) But he, he really likes doing like the raw style stuff. And yeah, so he's like starting his own channel and so if you go and watch his channel it'll be a lot of like stuff that you will not see on my channel that I wouldn't put out on my channel so that's exciting so I'll leave a link for his channel in the show notes too so people can go find him and subscribe because he's awesome love Kyle (laughs) um so I know you're busy I'll kind of wrap up some questions so some just some kind of are you okay good (laughs) me too I'm like I could just keep going um yay well we'll have to do this again (laughs) um so just yeah some kind of final closing questions what what do you have planned for your future both kind of professionally and personally I mean, I, I just literally take it day by day. Like I just go with the flow. Like sure. I have like some goals. Like my biggest goal is to just live as sustainably and as, you know, healthy and happy as possible. One day I would really like to have, you know, some land and be able to grow a ton of my own food. And that's kind of like, personally, that's what I don't know. Professionally, I'm really going into this fitness thing. I'm really loving it. I want to grow that a lot. And, you know, I'm, I really want to inspire people to start moving their bodies regularly and also, you know, draw people in through that fitness, but then also share with them the vegan aspect of it. So and I'm already starting to do that, which is so, so cool that people like are enjoying that. So yeah, that's really kind of what I can see so far. <laughs> so just mostly focusing on your YouTube. That's kind of your main thing you no know, other yeah, ebook, also, ebooks coming up yes I am creating I'm creating my second ebook Yay. I, didn't even say that. I was like but I yeah, hope so she's gonna is, say yes on an ebook <laughs> <laughs> yes um so this is ebook number two it's gonna be another cookbook and it is all oat focused because I'm obsessed with oats I'm yes. obsessed with oatmeal and oatmeal like I watched this video somebody sent it to me and it's like all these um, plant-based doctors and they're asking them what they eat in a day and every, every single one of them is like, I eat a huge bowl of oats, all this stuff. And I'm like, yes, yes. Yeah. So yeah, so it's going to be all oat-focused recipes, not just like your regular bowl of oatmeal, but you know, like different types of baked oatmeals, um, overnight oats, different like cookies, savory stuff as Ooh. well. So Ooh, I like I'm that. Really excited for that. That's awesome. That's, that's funny. That was one of the questions I had written down under the like list of ebook questions. I was like, I should ask her if she's going to do an oatmeal ebook. I was like, she'll bring it up if she's going to. It's so <laughs> funny that you did. Yeah, you're, yeah. I mean, I lo- I pretty much could eat oatmeal every day for breakfast too. So <laughs> the, the know, variations but- will be nice. I know a lot of people they see oatmeal as such like this boring thing like it's just oats and water and it's like no like I wrote this in an Instagram caption the other day Um, I see oatmeal as a blank canvas and it's so true like there are so many things that you can do with oatmeal different style toppings and different fruits that are in season and stuff and it's just been really fun to see people like I used to hate oatmeal and now I love oatmeal because you've shown me so many different ways that actually look appetizing to me to eat it. I'm like, yes, that's so awesome. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I think a lot of people had either just really plain oatmeal that their parents would make them or those like packaged, like super sugary ones that are like 
not even enough for like three bites. You're like, what is this teeny yeah. amount? And so you're just like, yeah. eh, oatmeal. A lot of people, like my clients will be like, I don't do oats. And then it's like, we'll try these different kinds. And they're like, oh, this is really good. Oh. Yeah, I know. I, I grew up eating. I mean, my grandma really got me into porridge, which is why like I love oatmeal mm. so much. She used to make it for me all the time with just like cooked raisins in it with like some milk and brown sugar. Mm. And like, I would, she'd be like, do you want pancakes? I'm like, no, I want porridge. (laughs) Um, But yeah, at home, like I never used to make my own oats because my mom didn't really know how to make oatmeal or she never made oatmeal for us. And we would have just, again, like those little packets that were like dino eggs. Totally, totally. Yes. But like, I forgot about those. (laughs) I actually looked at them the other day. I was like, aren't these vegan? And there's like some like beetle stuff. Something like that, which is so weird. But yeah, that's kind of like what I grew up eating. And then I was like, no, like, grandma used to make me some really good porridge like this has to be tasty and then I saw other youtubers you know like putting frozen blueberries on it I'm like yes this makes so much sense (laughs) there's so many different kinds like so many so I'm excited for that how about savory oats are you a savory oats fan I have a really big sweet tooth and especially in the morning like I'm always craving something sweet I rarely crave something savory but I do like doing some kind of like savory renditions. I love mushrooms and, you know, just adding like some really cool veggies in there. I know you add zucchini to your oats. Yes. You some, like, sweet zucchini oats. Yeah. I've never even tried that, which I life changing. Think Seriously. All the time. <laughs> you would love it. It like bulks them up so much and adds nutrition and like you cannot taste it at all. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I love zucchini. So I'm like, that's like perfect. And you know, like making like chocolate zucchini bread. I'm totally. Like, yeah. Like yeah. But yeah, I love doing like a savory thing and like people are like, is it bad to have oats for dinner? I'm like, heck no. Like I'll have oats for every single meal. And it's so cool that you can just kind of like switch it up to make it sweet or savory. But I definitely prefer sweet. Are you going to have some savory recipes in your (laughs) ebook? Okay, good, good, good. I have a lot of people Um, ask me like, I hate sweet breakfast. You know, I'm, I'm like you, I would have oatmeal, smoothie, fruit, just something like that for breakfast. But some people just are like, I have to have a savory breakfast. So I know. that's exciting. Yeah. That you'll I'm have like, I can't really there. relate, but, uh, I'll, yeah. try, I'll, I'll try help you out. That. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Um, and then what about, what does the future of veganism look like to you? Mm, that's a really good question. Mm-hmm. A lot of people ask me, like, do you ever think the whole world is going to go vegan? And my answer is pretty much always no, not for a really, 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 really long time. At least like, you know, there's different cultures that like, you know, they literally thrive off of fishing and that's all that they can eat. So, I mean, I definitely don't think there's going to be an entirely vegan world, but veganism is growing like exponentially. Like I didn't even know what a vegan was only like six years ago. And now it's like, there's vegan restaurants everywhere. And a lot of people think, oh, it's just a fad. Like, it's just, you know, people are trying to make money off of it. I'm like, who cares? Like, (laughs) it's it's opening people's eyes. And it's like, oh, I can actually have a meal of just plants without, you know, having meat as Mm -hmm. the base of my meal. So I definitely think it's growing. I definitely think it will continue to grow, especially now that it's so prevalent on social media. And, you know, everyone's showing, you know, again, their fitness and what they eat and stuff like that. And so many people, there's so many like plant powered athletes out there that are sharing stuff that undoubtedly it's, it's going to grow even bigger. So I'm excited. Yeah, it really is exciting. And you're such a big part of this like, movement. I mean, and you're only continuing to snowball with your followers and the impact you're making. So yeah, I'm so again, so it's inspired so by you. I'm literally like, I say this, all the time but it's just so crazy to think that only a few years like I was watching other vegans to get inspiration online and now like here I am talking to however many thousands of people per day like sharing just my life and the vegan message it's just like it's so it's so cool yeah and I mean I mean the amount of subscribers on your YouTube channel I mean that's huge 200,000 plus I mean that's a massive amount of people that you're reaching through, you know, your, your, your videos are just so inspirational. So I can only imagine, and, and even just going through some of the comments and all that stuff and just reading like you help me go vegan, or I went vegan because of this video. It's just like, and I literally like everybody, 
who follows me, I mean, I swear they're the most kind, positive group of people out there. And I could not be more grateful because I do see, you know, other YouTubers and a lot of their comments are just full of like people who just don't really like resonate with them. And I just really feel like people who are following me are like so supportive and so kind and so positive. And it's just, I mean, I couldn't ask for anything more. So yeah, you've created an amazing community. I really, it's like your, your community that on all aspects of your social media is just everyone's so supportive and kind and helpful. So I mean, you're, yeah. you're the, you're the base of it. So <laughs> thank you for, for everything you're doing and for everything you continue to do. Um, yeah, I, I just am so thankful that you took some time out of your day to come be on my little podcast. So, um, thanks so again. good to finally like talk with you. Right. Like, I mean, it, we're still doing it through the internet, but like, I was just so excited because like I said before, like you're literally the most chill, good vibe person. Like I really just like resonate with you. So I was so excited when you asked me to Yay. do it. I was so pumped. I felt that same way too. I was like, okay, I feel like we're on the same vibe. So I was like, I'll just throw it out there and see if she'll want to be on my podcast. And, I was, and then yeah. you said yes. I was like, yay, it's so exciting. Yeah. And so. I was so stoked that you started a podcast because I was like, she is the perfect person <laughs> to be doing podcasts. Like, yeah, it's have been like good. the right, the right, I don't even know how to explain it, like not mentality, but you're just like the right vibe, the right, you know, well, thank so you. So thank proud you. of you. I'm thank so you happy. so much. I'm glad you were my first guest. And thank, I feel I like know, you said, like exciting. the nerves totally went away and I had so totally. much fun. <laughs> so I feel better yeah. for next time. And honestly, we should do this again. Like talk about totally. maybe exercise, weightlifting more, narrow down a focus later in the future, but yeah. this was fun. Or even have Kyle. I would love to talk to Kyle too, yeah, or both of you. Cool. Cool. Yeah, Sweet. Well, thank you it. so much. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for doing this and I hope you have a great day. Thanks. You as well.